All right, it's the end of January. As promised, I'm going to give away a BN0055 Absolute Orientation Sensor to one lucky subscriber. I thought while I'm here, I might as well give you a quick tip. It's nothing groundbreaking. Some of you are probably already familiar with it, but a lot of you I know are very new to ROS, very new to robotics, and this is going to be something that, if you are new, is going to be a um, possibly a big game changer in what you're able to do with your robot. What I'm going to do real quick is just show you why you don't need to be afraid to use something like the Raspberry Pi 3, little Raspberry Pi 3 there, uh, for the main controller for your robot, um, because you want to do some heavier lifting with it. You want to do some image recognition, uh, some open CV work, maybe um, object detection using like YOLO, something like that. Most of us know doing something that heavy on the Raspberry Pi 3 is pretty much a no-go. The Raspberry Pi 3 is an amazing little machine for its weight, for its size, its power consumption, and its price. It's like $35 um, for all this hardware, but it still is not going to replace a several hundred dollar, thousand dollar uh, computer in terms of doing some heavy processing, like image recognition is one of the big things a lot of people want to do with their robot, and you're just not going to do it very well with a Raspberry Pi 3, except if you use this little trick. Ooh. Ah. Reason I can get away with using a Pi 3 on all my robots instead of jumping up to a Pi 4, or I do love the NVIDIA Jetson Nano, those are pretty great, um, but I don't need those on everything. And one of the reasons is because of how easy Ross makes it to network from computer to computer. So I keep another computer in the house. I'm going to use my laptop here for this demo. But I have another computer that's here in the house all the time, so I can run my robots around the house from work or whatever, and have another computer network that can do the heavy lifting. And a lot of people are afraid to get into networking. They think it's going to be a big deal or a big hassle. But Ross makes it super easy. And I'm going to show you how you can do it in just two lines on the command line on each computer. And it's going to be very easy, and it's going to be a game changer if you haven't done it yet. So what I have here, I already showed you, my little rover just kind of runs around wrote it to go along with my book um, i've got my laptop here i take to work and do all my stuff on i have a slower less fancy one that i keep upstairs but uh, that's not here with me so uh, cut over to the screencast that i hope is recording you'll see that i have a terminal a window terminal popped up and i've got four windows on it uh, that's kind of my typical pop open configuration and uh, if you're not familiar yet with uh, SSH, you should be. So get familiar with that. You absolutely need that. If you want to do robotics, you're going to be doing that quite a lot because you can't plug right into your machine every time you want to do something. Uh, so over here on the left side, you can see that this is just my computer uh, that, I'm, that we're staring at here. I just populated something to begin with. Uh, you can see if I hit ROS Topic List, this right here means I'm not running ROS at all on this computer. Over on the right, uh, you'll see, and this is um, SSH'd in already um, to my little robot that you saw. Uh, and if I run Ross Topic List here, I've got nothing running. Okay, so what Ross makes it very easy to do is to be able to run the Ross Core, the master node, on one computer, and then just with a couple lines of code, uh, or a couple command lines, you're able to use that master, but run nodes on another computer, another machine. So while I could never run YOLO on the Raspberry Pi 3 uh, without even using my GPU and all that stuff, I'm, just, uh, I'm able to run it on this laptop, and I'm going to show you that real quick. So the way to do this, and it's going to take just a minute, the way to do this, the first thing you need to do is find your IP address. They have to be on the same network, the same Wi-Fi network. All right, so I'm going to use this lower one here. I'm just going to type IP address. Easy enough, right? And... Right here where you see INET, 192.168.1.237. That's my local IP for this little machine. So what we're able to do, and I'll show you on the other side. Um, in fact, I'm going to do this. I already have a little cheap set up here. Um, we just need to enter into the, uh, into the terminal window. Uh, export ROS master URI equals HTTP colon slash slash this address colon 
11311. That's important. That's saying that when it runs uh, ROS, it's going to look to be the master, right? It's going to use this IP address as a reference for, I need this to be the master. So if I run ROS core on this machine, uh, it's going to be on this machine. Now, on my other machine, I need to use that same IP address because I don't want my laptop to be the ROS master. What if I leave for the day, right? I want my Raspberry Pi to be the master. Uh, That's just how I have this set up. So I'm going to use uh, that very. So I'm going to use that very same command: uh, export ROS master URI, same address. I'm going to use the IP address from the Raspberry Pi on the computer that I want to be the remote computer, not the master. I want it to be a slave. There we go. We're all set there with the ROS master. The last thing we need to do is here again. I'll use this lower this lower quadrant. Um, I'm going to export the IP address. We've already got both machines set up to use the Raspberry Pi as the master. What that means is when they launch any nodes, those nodes are going to look for the master at the IP address that we entered when we exported the, the URI. Now we're going to export the uh, ROS IP address. And what that's going to do is make sure when they launch nodes, they launch off of their own IP address. On this side here, this is the Raspberry Pi again. I'm going to use the same IP address right here. I'm going to export that. And then on the left, uh, again, the left is my laptop. I'm going to export the laptop's IP address. Boom, done. And I got that the same way, and I'll show you. I got that the same way just by typing IP address. So I'm just going to use that IP address when I export the ROS IP for that machine. Okay, with that done, it's this easy. Now, I can simply launch. I'm going to use a little launch file. I don't have the LiDAR plugged in for this demo, so ignore the little red error. Those two. And everything else looks good. We're just going to let that run in the background. It's out of our way. We'll come back over to this side. We'll clear these windows just because. So I'm a little OCD, okay? So we're going to run our vis on this side. And actually, we don't need to wait for our vis. Let yellow launch. show you next is a shortcut so you don't have to enter all that stuff manually every time every time you open up a computer or want to boot up and the secret is your bash RC if you're not familiar your bash RC is something that initializes it runs when a terminal opens up so either what I showed you you have to enter in every single terminal you open up uh, if I run export in the top window up here, it's the same thing's not going to work for the bottom window that's open, or if I open another one, unless these commands are in my bash RC. So all we have to do is sudo gedit or leafpad or nano, whatever you want to use, and it is in your uh, home directory. So use a little tilde slash dot bash RC. Enter your password. So you can see a lot of things in the bash RC that happen every time a terminal opens. This is a comment, so these lines don't get read. And I tend to put all my stuff in the bottom. Uh, and you can see that I have a couple I have commented out right now. Um, my hotspot, I use a hotspot when I'm mobile, when I'm playing around away from the home. Um, so my little robot at home, every time these terminals open, it automatically exports the master URI for 
this little machine that I've been playing around with while writing practical robotics in C++ and it exports its own IP address at the house. Um, the same thing is true on the Raspberry Pi machines. And here we go. Here's Bash RC. So I'm running Kinetic and on this machine every time it boots up it just exports its master so other computers that I have in the house can network to it, um, including the house computer that I just leave here at the home. And that is all there is to ROS networking. It is a huge game changer just to be able to run heavy things, trying to run YOLO, optic recognition. When I just have a lot going on on the little Raspberry Pi, it doesn't hurt. I, sometimes I just run those things. I tend to write them on this computer anyway, so I don't have to transport a package from where I wrote it to be able to run and test it out on the Raspberry Pi. I don't have to I don't have to copy it and do a cat can make on the Raspberry Pi. I can just do all that right here on this machine. In summary, on the master computer, you are going to find the IP address with IP address. You're going to export the ROS master URI using that machine's own IP address and then you're going to export the ROS IP using that machine's own IP address. Again, you have to do it in every single terminal, or better yet, just add it to Bash RC if you're using the same computers all the time. And I don't even have to think about it at the house. It just happens when I open the terminals. If you do add it to Bash RC, don't forget you have to type source Bash RC, uh, or better yet, just close your terminals and open them back up, and it should be working. The steps on the slave machine are basically the same. You're going to find the IP address. You're going to export the ROS master, but you're going to use the IP address of the master. That's the only difference in these steps. Step three, you're going to export ROS IP using the slave's IP address. And again, you have to do it in every terminal. And by the way, you are not limited to two computers. If I wanted a few robots running around the house and I wanted them to share data uh, about mapping or different sensors with temperature and is the basement on fire so the upstairs robot maybe knows, I don't know if I wanted to watch the backyard in the driveway with cameras, I can use the ROS network that's already running to send an image back and have Darknet tell me whether it's a deer or actually people in the driveway. And so that's the end of that. I hope that helped you out just a little bit. If it didn't, well, I hope you stick around because I have a lot more stuff I want to do as soon as I'm done. I have one more chapter to write, and we are done with Practical Robotics in C++. We just finished a chapter on Sensor Fusion, and the next chapter we're going to put together everything we did from electronics uh, to installing software to writing very basic programs to learning how to use more advanced programs than we would generally write ourselves. Um, we're going to learn these algorithms like robotics logic, how, how these things work so that you're not stuck when a tutorial doesn't work just right away the first time. You actually... So with that, it's time to give away a BN0055 Absolute Orientation Sensor. If you didn't see my review video, it was the video I did before this. I'll link it. Uh, I don't know where they put the link when I put it up. There'll be a link so you can see it, or you can just click on my profile. Make sure you subscribe. If you're not subscribed yet, I'll be giving away more stuff. Uh, I'll definitely be giving away a copy or two of Practical Robotics in C++. I've got some more sensors that I want to review, show you how to use. I'll show you how to hack some parts like a LiDAR from a salvage robot vacuum, how to use the wheels from a Roomba. Give the channel a like, give it a subscribe for sure, and let's figure out how to give this thing away. All right, I'm back. Had to do a little Googling because I couldn't remember. I looked it up before, but... This is my first giveaway, so yeah, uh, I found the random YouTube comment picker, and apparently I just enter the URL here, and one lucky person, uh, one lucky person who commented is going to win a pretty awesome absolute orientation sensor. I'm quite a fan. Oops. So I answered it there. I'm going to filter duplicate users so people don't comment a bunch and get extra chances. And 10. Okay. So let's start raffle. Pick random winner. Ba, 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 ba. All right. Little French robot. 
and it was pretty easy and painless. Congratulations, little French robot. You're gonna have a great little IMU to go in your little French robot.